Hello everyone, welcome to our catch-up lesson number one, where we'll take a look at the origins of psychology as a science, one of the areas on your AQA specification that can be applied to a few other areas as well, allowing you to develop your synoptic skills. So in this part of the lesson, we'll take a look at the psychology timeline and the approaches you need to be familiar with for paper two, arguments for and against the claim that psychology is a science, and some of the key features of science as well. And in later sessions, we'll apply these to Wundt's approach in psychology. So let's start with a key term that you should always try and use when you talk about approaches and the timeline of psychology, and that term is paradigm. And a paradigm consists of the basic assumptions, ways of thinking, and methods of study that are commonly accepted by members of a discipline or group. So, for example, you may be familiar with the psychodynamic paradigm. So, although you are likely to refer to it as the psychodynamic approach, for example, the term paradigm is useful when talking about paradigm shifts. And this is what happens when one approach becomes the new, commonly accepted one, and we have a shift in assumptions about human mind and behaviour. Hopefully you're familiar with the paradigms already. You can see these on the timeline on the screen. And it is important to note that psychology has clearly evolved over time. And each paradigm shift, in other words, each change in the leading approach, contributing to psychology becoming more accepted as a science. So you can see that in the early days of psychology, the dominant paradigm was led by Wundt who was shifted by the psychodynamic approach in the 1900s. And as we go through the years, psychology becomes more scientific with lab experiments from the behaviourists, brain scans and biology in the 1980s, and the emergence of the cognitive neuroscience approach. So we keep mentioning the term science, and part of understanding whether psychology is a science or not is becoming familiar with the key features that make something a science. Now, this is crucial for your research methods learning, but also for your knowledge and evaluation of approaches. So let's take a look at some of the key features of science. The first key feature of science I'll mention is objectivity. And this means researching or conducting studies without the influence of any bias, any emotions or assumptions. Now, this is a key feature of science since it avoids all of the flaws associated with subjectivity. However, do bear in mind the question about whether true objectivity is possible. For example, if you're putting great effort into trying to be objective, then that itself could reduce objectivity. So in science, objectivity is strived for, and that's why researchers opt for methods such as experiments, brain scans, or any other objective ways of gathering data. Control is another key feature of science, meaning that all research should be done where possible in controlled conditions. Another reason why lab experiments are considered scientific. This control will allow for replicability, but it's also the best way to try and establish cause and effect in research. Replicability, another key feature of science, means that other researchers can repeat the study in the same conditions and continue to find out whether results are reliable over time or between several studies. Without the ability to replicate, no such reliability can be assessed, calling into question any findings or conclusions from research. Finally, hypothesis testing is a crucial key feature of science, since this is where the falsifiability of research is determined. All research should make predictions that are supported or disproved by others. And in fact, it's largely considered that disproving the research is the most important opportunity, since this is what is more likely to help make new advances in psychology and lead to more paradigm shifts. Any approaches or assumptions that aren't falsifiable are not able to scientifically be supported or disproven. Since this reduces its contribution to psychology as a science, those tend not to be the most favourable ones in paradigms. So now that you're clear on the key features of science, would you consider psychology to be a science? Pause the video for two minutes while you come to your own conclusion and make sure that you're able to use examples to justify your decision whether you think psychology is or is not a science. 
Now, that was not a straightforward question at all, and hopefully you spotted some arguments for both yes and no, but let's take a look at some of these arguments now. So firstly, since psychology shares the same aims as science, we could consider it to be a science of its own. And also, as I said earlier, many of the paradigms do adopt scientific methods of study. However, this is not the case for all paradigms, with approaches such as the psychodynamic one opting to rely on case studies and interviews rather than controlled lab experiments. And finally, not all variables in research can be controlled in psychology, whereas they can in something like a biological experiment. So as you can see, the answer is not clear cut. And as long as you can make arguments for and against the idea that psychology is a science in your exam, then I'm sure you'll make some really good, interesting discussion 